see the man get out my face. Yeah, I don't know who you are. I don't kill you. Are. Please, please, please. So see, you've been deceived by these pictures on TV. Everybody's hugging each other. Everybody's together. Go outside and see if that's the same thing. It's not the same thing. When you go outside, you see the complete opposite. Everybody at each other's necks. You see Asians getting punched around by black people and white people, right? But do you see that in Hollywood? Do you see black and white people punching Asian people because of COVID-19? You do not, do you? They're completely detached from our reality. Why isn't, why isn't rich black and white people punching rich Asians? If we're all in the same experience and we are all going through the same struggle, then why isn't that going on there? So it's safe to say the racism that we see in our community, the rich are not experiencing that either. These rich white uh, black people are not getting, uh, they go through some things, you know, but let's keep it 100. It's rich people problems for the most part. It really is. They're not sharing in the same experience. The rich African Americans are not sharing in the same experience with the poor African Americans. Because everybody's happy at the top. Hey, if you have millions of dollars, you're going to be mad? Are white people there going to be mad at you? They could care less. They might still be racist, but like, I don't care. I'm rich. I don't care. <laughs> I am not going to be angry at some African Americans when I'm rich. You think I'm worried about anyone? I'm not even worried about my own family. I'm rich. Let alone some African Americans. I'm just, look, you got to think like humans. You don't do that. <laughs> Not when it's outside of your experience. True, you got money. You, you, you will all appear to be unified in love. You're unified by money. Now, see, see, see. Here this part. Here's 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 the punchline. Here's the setup. They're all unified by money and not by race. So their race is rich. I'm not black. I'm not Mexican. I'm not white. I'm rich. Oh yeah, that's a race in America. So really, the rich is a race. I'm gonna let that resonate. I'm gonna let that resonate. The rich is a race. And a race that really doesn't care about you. You know who America hates the most? Poor people, homeless people, specifically. They hate homeless people. This country hates homeless people. Oh, you didn't notice that, did you? I know you was too busy looking at a life on TV that you don't live. They hate homeless people here. Yeah, they do. And here's the, and you know why? Because they feel like all homeless people could be working. I'm going to let that resonate. They feel like all homeless people could be working.
They hate homeless people. Thank you, Lord, for this good information. They hate homeless people. Young people hate them too. Old, young, everybody. You're taught, I would even say they're taught to hate homeless people here. And the foundation of that hate, real hate, seething hate even, the foundation for that hate is they could be working. You should be working. Why are you not working? Why are you not employed? Why are you not at a job site? Why are you not on your way to work? We forget that we have the freedom to not work. We forget that African Americans work for free when they were when and they were in, they were forced to work for free. We forget about this and particularly concerning African-American homeless people, you shouldn't have nothing to say when their ancestors work for free. Particularly, particularly, I can't speak for any other race concerning this, particularly with African-American, you should bite your tongue realizing that they're specifically their ancestors, m most of them, worked for free for the same government, for the same workforce, if you will. And that right there should keep your mouth off of particularly African-American homeless people. Because what I feel is because of the free labor that African-Americans gave this country, millions of dollars of free labor, by the way, trillions, I think, even, right? The equivalent, definitely. Even, even more. I think because of that free labor, that the descendants of the African Americans, which will be us, which will be me, are recipients of EBT as a form of karma. Food stamps, EBT is karma. Because my ancestors were for free. And guess what? Now I get money for free. Now I get food stamps for free. Now I get money for free. You know why? Because my ancestors were for free. Ding, 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 ding. That's called karma. Why you call it living off the system. And God, I feel like the Lord may, may have showed me this. Because I was like, yeah, that's right. EBT is a form of karma. Free money for no work needed. No work needed for ancestors, you know, for the reasons that my ancestors work and receive nothing. So guess what his descendants is going to get? Something without working because he put in the work. So now I'm getting what I what he should have got. And guess what I'm going to have to do? Nothing for it. Because that is true 
justice, and karma. You should have been gave us retribution anyway. You should have been gave us something for our ancestors working for nothing. This is about empires. History doesn't go away and bloodlines don't go away either. So what are all his bloodlines supposed to do? When they're so far behind, decades behind, because they work for free. If the, if the Africans had worked for a wage, then guess what? His, the African-American empire, here it is, would be further alone and established in America. We wouldn't be asking you for anything if you gave us what we should have had when we worked for you in the beginning. When we worked for you in the beginning, we would have gave our, uh, we would have built something. We would have had money to build something. So see, at the end of the day, this is all about empires of bloodlines. This is all about empires of bloodlines. And the African American does not have an empire because his descent, his ascendants work for free. His ancestors work for free. So he lacks an empire. Why you have the white empire in America, you have the Chinese, the Chinese empire in America. You got a Chinatown in every great city. You go to Kansas City, you got a Chinatown. You go to Miami, you got a Chinatown, I'm pretty sure. You go to San Francisco, you got a Chinatown. You go to any great city, Atlanta, you got a Chinatown. You go to Phoenix, I'm probably sure you got a Chinatown. You go to Seattle, you got a Chinatown. You go to Chicago, you got a Chinatown. You go to St. Louis, you got a Chinatown. You go to Detroit, you got a Chinatown. You have a Chinatown in every great city. That's called an empire for the slow people. That's what great men get out and work for to establish for the slow people. We don't work just to be working. Great men and leaders of a race work to establish an empire. Again, great leaders in men and women of a particular race work to establish an empire and it's not called racism for their race. So see, this is about empires. And if you worked the African-American for free and then for a low wage after that, not even a living wage, meaning he, can, he can't go and get an apartment or a house, then you deprived him this whole time of an empire. And so guess what? You think I'm worried about how you feel about me receiving free money when you've deprived my race this whole time of an empire, but you have the Chinese empire here that you helped, and now you have the Mexican empire. Hey, they got neighborhoods outside of the poverty experience in America. They don't all live in the ghetto. When Mexicans come straight from Mexico, do they go to a ghetto? You would think so, with no money in your pocket. So why aren't they going to the black ghettos where it's the cheapest living circumstances? You don't see them really doing that. For as many illegal or legal Mexicans that come over here, you don't see them running to the most poverty-stricken places where they can come up the quickest. Or where they can survive the quickest. So why they run into almost the equivalent of middle class neighborhoods? That's people straight from Mexico. You know why? Because there's a Mexican empire here and established here in America. That gives them the ability to come here and go straight to almost a... Um, a, the lowest of middle class, but definitely middle class neighborhoods. They go to low middle class neighborhoods, in other words. You would think coming straight from Mexico with nothing but peanuts in your pocket. 
saltines and peanuts, you would think you'd be running to the nearest ghetto trying to get a Debbie cake for 50 cents. Trying to get a pack of chips in the bodega in the ghetto. But for the most part, do you see him really on the streets like that? You don't, do you? You know why? Because they're running to the established Mexican empire here in America. And guess what Africans do when they come here? Oh, you ain't going to like this. This going to this going to make you this going to get you angry. They got programs for African immigrants to come over here. They don't have to run to the ghetto either. They put them in Ethiopian neighborhoods and Nigerian neighborhoods where they have put African countries away from the ghetto. Oh, come on. Why don't you see all these African immigrants in the ghetto then? Explain to me with all these African immigrants coming over here as well. How come you don't see them going to the ghetto? How come you don't see Nigerians and people from Ghana going to a ghetto because the American government has separated African immigrants from the African American ghettos as well. They give them programs. They got places that they live that you don't know about. That is their community. And therefore, it's safe to say they have an empire here as well. Now that should get you hot. Literally, you should be seething with heat, not because of the African American African immigrants, but because they are they've been like almost intentionally denying you of an empire like they just hate you forever. Like they want a problem with you for no reason. That should get you pretty angry. Where you're feeling the heat in your skin. That's what I feel right now. I feel heat in my skin. When I can look at everybody, even Africans that come here, do not have to go to ghettos. You do not see them all at ghettos. Do you? You do not. And you already know that, you know, everyone else from the Middle East, they come over here and they get bodegas. Why the black man ain't got no bodegas? You would think the African-Americans would have plenty of bodegas, bodegas all around New York City. Why the black people don't got bodegas around New York City? I mean, you know, you got moms, single moms. Why, why the single mom ain't got a bodega? Why the single dad ain't got a bodega? Why do not African American families, it's just looking at it as a business, have a bodega? But the bottom line is, everybody else and their mama got an empire except for you. And so, see, Mexican man and Mexican woman. You see what you see why I don't play no games? We're allowing you to come over and play with me, and we already going through this. We got an Af we, we we don't have an empire. We don't have an African American empire. We don't and, and look, it ain't crying. I'm not crying about it. I'm doing something about it. I'm doing something about it. Because he has a problem. This white man, this racist white man here, and it's not all white people. I'm not ignorant like that. But it's enough of the racist white people to keep it as it is. And whatever is in his head that makes him feel like he want to play with us, and you know, for no apparent reason, 
We got to do something about that. He had like he got a problem for no reason. You know, and I come from a generation that, hey, hey if you got, you, you look like you got a problem for no reason, then, I, then, then I'm going to handle it. See, the older generation sat back and said, uh, and submitted. It's going to be all right. They submitted to people that act like they got a problem with them for no reason. I come from a generation, man, if you even look at me like you got a problem for no reason. I'm going to mark you in my mind. And I'm going to remember you. I don't play with people that got a problem for no reason. And that's why you have so much destruction. You know, and you have these people in this country that are African American. And you should be ashamed of yourself with holding on to a country that never held on to you. <laughs> you should be ashamed. You don't even look right for a black person to be walking around with American flags on. It don't even look right. You know what that flag represents? Your slavery and captivity. And if just in case you think, uh, we passed the time of the man and the man this, how we passed it? When you got police shootings all the time. I'm tired of hearing black people blame the man. Well, the man is still doing stuff. Because you have those kind of people. Man, you, you know, black people always talk about the man. Well, it is what it is. He's still doing things, isn't he? He's still shooting people, isn't he? He's still depriving you while everybody else and their mama got empires. Isn't that the truth? Isn't it the truth? Mexicans got an empire. Chinese got an empire in every, every great city. So how come you ain't got one yet? So although you may have thought that you progressed past this demand mentality, you have not when you do not have an empire. Okay, you're successful on your own, but everybody can't go to school. Come on, man. Everybody cannot work and get the success that you have. You want me to tell you why? Back to the homeless people. Everybody in America cannot work at the same time. Oh, they ain't tell you that, did they? Let me let that resonate. Everybody in America, all these American citizens, the 333 million plus American citizens, can all cannot all work at the same time. In other words, for the slow people, whether you be black or white or Mexican or whatever, for all the slow people, there are not enough jobs for everybody here. Oh, let me let that resonate. There are not enough jobs for everybody here to work at the same time. So what do those people supposed to do? So back to the homeless people. Like I said, I believe That they, that they are the most, one of the most hated group of people under African Americans. If it wasn't from that, homeless people would be the most hated type of in, human beings there is. And you all think that everybody can work. Okay, it's not enough jobs for all the homeless people. That's not an excuse. Can you employ all these homeless people? You talking about go get a job. Can you white conservatives have enough job openings for every single... Yeah, I'm being literal. I'm being literal. You're being literal. So I'm being literal. Do you have enough jobs for every single homeless person out here? Because you look at it as a literal, situa as a literal thing, as a literal situation. 
Oh, everybody could be working. If everybody were working, it'd be a better country. If everybody were working, they would be happy. Everybody can't work. There are not enough jobs in America to employ 333 million people that are here. So what you got to say about that? Well, eventually, well, eventually is not coming. Eventually never is, is happening. So they're still unemployed. Why eventually is never happening. While you're talking about ultimately <laughs> and eventually, ultimately and eventually, it's never happening. Therefore, everybody can't be employed at the same time. Everybody can't work here. Therefore, your dream, your, which is a pipe dream, at this point, cannot come to pass when everybody cannot work at the same time. You can't even say a revolving door. You can't say that because that's what you're going to say. Well, everybody, you know, somebody will quit and somebody else will work. In. But then that still is another unemployed person <laughs> that you're going to look down on. So again, so that you know what's going on, everybody in America cannot work at the same time. I got to do this because you do type of person that would rather see a homeless person dead. Yeah, you are. You feel with that much hate. Because really, you hate your job. <laughs> so you take it out on them. <laughs> That's the real truth. They could be working. Everybody got to work. Well, everybody can't work in America. This is the facts. Guys, this is not my opinion. You cannot employ everyone in America, including the homeless people, all at one time. So what is they what are they supposed to think like? Well, I get work one day. That's what they're supposed to think about. But guess what they're doing meanwhile? Dodging all your darts and bullets, all your hate and anger at them. Why they can't even be all employed at the same time. See, that's how stupid you are. You couldn't figure this out on your own. Yeah, you didn't think about it. You didn't think about it, did you? And here I go again, revealing something to you that you didn't know. Here I go again. Revealing something to you that you don't think about. Here I go again, worthy to be named above you because you can't even see that everybody in your country cannot work at the same time. This is why I outrank you. Because you sitting up here so stupid and simple. Going outside, warming up your car in the wintertime, looking down on the homeless people. Sitting in your car, warming up. Looking down on them. Yeah, I can't stand them homeless people sitting out here. Sure, I got to work and they should be working too. One guy even was killed, killed some homeless people. I'm pretty sure it was because he hated the fact that they wasn't working. Meanwhile, your workforce cannot employ all of its citizens. But yet you say you're the greatest country in the world. And well, you don't have job openings for every American citizen, buddy. That's for you, Joe Biden. It ain't just your responsibility, but hey, you are the president. I think you need to know that. In other words, yeah, tell your military that too. By the way, tell your police that and your firemen that and your teachers. <laughs> you 
you all need to know that everyone cannot be employed in your American community. So how you feel about that? What's your opinion on that? Well, work will come. No, no. Work won't come when there's not enough jobs or openings for everyone to work at the same time. We own, we, the, the whole purpose is for everybody to be employed, right? Right? Meanwhile, there are not enough job openings. Let's get past the revolving door because a lot of you think, well, a revolving door where eventually somebody will get work. You're looking at this, you look, that, that dynamic or perspective doesn't apply here. What applies here is, let's just think about a room. A room is filled with employed, employed people, right? In America, somebody got to be left outside. I don't care about a revolving door. I don't care about people quitting. There's going to be people left outside without work at all times when, when everyone cannot work at the same time. In other words, they all can't fit in the same room at the same time. All these Americans cannot be working at the same time. This is your reality. Now, what you want to do about it is a different situation. But right now, as of now, June 21st, 2022, you cannot employ all American citizens. And I don't care how many jobs you add, because the jobs that you add, are not for people 